Hello and welcome to Alaska Weather. I'm meteorologist Amanda Bowen and I'm glad you could join us this evening. We will get, go ahead and get ahead into our weather. We don't have any watches, warnings, or advisories in effect for the next day or so, but we do continue to have some high to extreme fire danger over the central interior. Uh, one of the big areas is the Yukon Flats where it's topping out at extreme fire danger. Also just north of the Alaska Range and into the Fairbanks area, topping out at extreme fire danger there. As we'll talk about a little bit with the forecast, we've got some warming and drying conditions further south from there as well. So expect some increase in fire danger potential uh, further south over the next few days through the weekend. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on that for you. Taking a look at our satellite imagery, we have a, uh, it's hard to see, but a little bit of a spinning system still in the Gulf of Alaska uh, with that counterclockwise spin, a very weak but dissip and dissipating low pressure system. Also a little bit of a spin in the Southern Bering uh, with a weak low pressure system there as well. Um, we have the remnants of that front that we talked about yesterday over the interior, creating all of that cloudiness, especially over the southeastern mainland. But then once again, we've got relatively clear skies along the west coast. Uh, it's hard to see, but there is some fog in the immediate coastal areas that's being a little bit stubborn to clear today. But above that, um, no, no high clouds of any kind for the west coast. If we take a look ahead into our uh, surface charts, we can see exactly those things that we could see on the satellite imagery. We've got weak low in the Gulf of, of Alaska and then another weak low with that dissipating stationary front across the central mainland. With that, with that dissipating front, we are expecting a chance of thunderstorms across the eastern interior around the Eagle area and then stretching west across uh, Fairbanks and then across the Yukon River and up into the area just south of the Central Brooks Range a bit. Also looking at some showers for the Gulf Coast from the, uh, the western side of Cook Inlet and then not so much for Kenai Peninsula but then again from Prince William Sound east all the way to Yakutat and then also showers down through the Panhandle today. You can see that high pressure in command for uh, southwest as well as all the way up the west coast. But again, we do have that fog that is potentially preventing some of that sun from getting through for folks along the west coast. Heading into tonight, things clearing up for most of the interior. A few lingering showers for uh, the southern central interior north of the south central area itself maybe in the matsu valley and points east from there to the canadian border so some showers there looks like probably no thunderstorms overnight tonight though we have high pressure coming into the north slope that's going to be bringing cooler temperatures as well as some fog so if temperatures get down below freezing we could see some freezing fog along the north slope uh, tonight also continuing fog along the west coast with high pressure continuing in that area and some rain continuing for the southern panhandle uh, still associated with that dissipating low in the gulf for thursday this is uh, the last we should see pretty much of this low in the gulf but still bringing some rain and showers to the panhandle we do have a trough essentially replacing that stationary front that dissipating stationary front so it's going to be as that shifts south we're going to shift south also that chance of thunderstorms for thursday afternoon into the eastern alaska range and central alaska range uh, west to about the denali area not a whole lot of other precipitation for the mainland though with mostly mostly dry conditions along the entire yukon river as well as the west coast and even the alaska peninsula with that high pressure still sticking around we do have our next low pressure system moving into the far western bearing west of the aleutians but bringing a front through the aleutians that will be bringing some rain to the area and friday one uh one last day of a few showers for the southern panhandle even though we have a weak low pressure system over the mainland still just some spotty showers associated with that not so much in the way of thunderstorms for friday afternoon we do see some rain starting to move into the west coast again from the yukon delta up through the western seward peninsula and into the chukchi sea coast as that high pressure system shifts southward even though it's strengthening it's shifting southward so uh, bringing those clear conditions more to the bristol bay area instead of the west coast at that point 
Finally, moving into temperatures for Thursday morning for the southern southeastern part of the state. Mostly upper 40s and low 50s for Thursday morning. We've got 50 there at Juneau, a cool spot of 47 at Yakutat, 51 at Seward for Thursday morning. Thursday afternoon, a cool one for the Panhandle with temperatures in the upper 50s to low 60s, 63 there at Haines being a warm spot. But some warming for South Central and the Alaska Peninsula. You've got all the way up to 76 there at Talkeetna, 74 at Glen Allen, and even up to about 70 degrees for the Anchorage area. Friday morning, pretty much the same story as Thursday morning. Upper 40s to low 50s pretty much across the board. And then Friday afternoon, even more warming for South Central and some warning, warming for uh, the northern part of the Panhandle where there will be fewer clouds and less rain. Uh, in the Matsu Valley, we're looking at 81 at Talkeetna. That's definitely going to be our warmest area. It can be a, a fire weather pattern for us, but we aren't expecting as much wind and the fuels aren't quite as as dry um, as they as they could be so probably a little bit less of a concern but still warm and dry for the matsu valley there on friday looking at the northern half of the state for thursday morning once again cool temperatures along the north slope right around freezing much warmer as usual across the interior temperatures in the mid 50s and 40s along the west coast thursday afternoon uh, getting all the way up to around 50 degrees for the north slope so finally some warming up there mid 70s for the interior and uh, still cool, um, but not cold along the west coast, 40s and 50s there. Friday morning, uh, not much change for the interior in the west coast, 40s for the west coast, 50s for the interior. And then for the north slope, quite a bit warmer uh, Friday morning with uh, temperatures only getting down into the 40s. And then finally on Friday afternoon, we will see some 80s across the interior, 82 being the warm spot there at Fort Yukon, and some noticeable warming for sure along the North Slope temperatures for the Eastern North Slope, even into the 60s uh, with 68 there around Prudhoe Bay. For the Southwest side of the state for Thursday morning, once again, upper 40s, low 50s, and for Thursday afternoon, we will see some warming 70s for the Alaska Peninsula, 71 there at Dillingham, 70 at King Salmon, cooler as we head uh, further west with 65 there at Bethel. And then Friday morning, much of the same, upper 40s, low 50s. And if we look at Friday afternoon, uh, a little bit more warming uh, for the Alaska Peninsula, but pretty much the same for the rest of Southwest with the immediate coastal areas in the mid 50s. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. And now we'll take a look at the aviation forecast. Starting with Thursday morning, we have IFR conditions along much of the west coast from the YK Delta northward through the Seward Peninsula. Also, IFR conditions along the North Gulf Coast from Prince William Sound eastward to about Yakutat, stretching north from there through the Ringel St. Elias Mountains and across parts of the Alaska Range. Also, IFR conditions for much of the Bering Sea and the Aleutians for Thursday morning. Thursday afternoon, we have some improvement, especially along the southeastern mainland and Prince William Sound areas where we'll see improvement to MVFR, even VFR conditions. Still some lingering IFR conditions uh, along the west coast and IFR conditions developing in the panhandle. We're also looking at the possibility of some thunderstorms Thursday afternoon in the Wrangell St. Elias Mountains as well as the Matsu Valley. For Friday morning, we see IFR conditions returning to those same areas of the West Coast, as well as developing along the north side of Seward Peninsula and up through the Chukchi Sea coast. Some improvement for portions of the Aleutians, but still mostly IFR for the eastern Aleutians all the way up through much of the Alaska Peninsula. Improvement in the Panhandle to VFR, but some MVFR lingering in the Prince William Sound and eastern Kenai areas Friday morning. And Friday afternoon, lots of improvement for the Panhandle and much of the Gulf Coast, just some MVFR conditions lingering there around Seward and the southern Prince William Sound. Improvement along some of the West Coast to MVFR conditions, but those IFR conditions are going to stick around Friday afternoon for the Chukchi Sea Coast as well as much of Norton Sound. We have our thunderstorm chances shifting to the central interior for Friday afternoon. 
Pass conditions on Thursday, Anaktubic Pass and Adigan Pass looking like VFR conditions on Thursday. Lake Clark Pass, MVFR in the morning, improving a VFR in the afternoon, but at Merrill Pass, it looks like MVFR all day on Thursday. Rainy Pass also MVFR all day on Thursday, as well as Windy Pass. Isabel Pass starting the day at IFR Thursday morning, improving to VFR Thursday afternoon, but we will see some chance for thunderstorms to the east of Isabel Pass. At Mentasta Pass, also looking like IFR in the morning, improving to VFR in the afternoon, with thunderstorms, a chance of thunderstorms there at Mentasta Pass on Thursday afternoon. And Tanita Pass starting the day at MVFR, improving to VFR in the afternoon, but again, a chance of thunderstorms there at Tanita Pass on Thursday. Portage Pass starting the day at MVFR and improving to VFR on Thursday afternoon. And Chilkoot and White Passes also both starting the day at MVFR, but improving to VFR on Thursday afternoon. For freezing levels, we have our coldest, our coldest air over uh, northwestern Canada and seeping into eastern Alaska. So 2,000 feet to 8,000 feet, a pretty tight gradient there near the Canadian border. 10,000 feet over much of the interior mainland and 12,000 feet along the west coast. Looks like about 8,000 feet above the panhandle. Icing on Thursday, not much to speak of at all. If you happen to be flying through the central gulf, then we're looking at some isolated moderate, but even that just above 10,000 feet for the entire land area of the state looking like uh, no icing for Thursday. Jet stream winds still kind of chaotic at the jet stream level with no clear jet, just some streaks here and there. So we have one streak over the western Aleutians out of the west, 80 to 85 knots south of a low there. And then another main streak, 75 to 85 knots out of the north over that area near the Alaska-Canada border. At 9,000 feet, we have our same low in the western Aleutians and another low in the Gulf. Uh, strongest winds on the south side of both of those lows, but not much wind to speak of over the actual uh, mainland or panhandle at 9,000 feet for Thursday. At 3,000 feet, a very similar pattern with our strongest winds around 40 knots south of that low in the Gulf, as well as that low in the Western Aleutians, but very light winds generally over the mainland as well as the panhandle. Some stronger winds out of the west, about 35 knots right along the Chukchi Sea coast. And finally, for turbulence on Thursday, just one area just north of the Alaska Range in the Fairbanks area and points east almost all the way to the border, looking like considerable moderate turbulence there below 4,000 feet. Dual polarization technology is a major upgrade to the current radar system. It allows forecasters a better idea of what's actually out there and can help keep you safe. Current radar technology uh, transmits and receives information in the horizontal direction, which is very limited. Dual polarization technology, in addition to the horizontal, transmits and receives uh, vertical energy, which allows forecasters to get information about the size, shape, and phase of the precipitation. We can use that information to better determine the precipitation type to expect at your given location. There you have it. This new technology is currently being installed in radars across the country and is already being used by National Weather Service forecasters to produce better, more accurate forecasts. Learn more here and follow us. Want to know about the future of weather radar? Well, the National Severe Storms Lab has it here with its new phased array radar. Let's check it out. It's a non-moving radar. It has four faces of the antenna, each pointing in different directions. One of the big advantages is that we're seeing so far, it can sample the, the area around the radar in less than a minute, maybe even a half a minute. And this is five, six times faster than what they can do today. NSSL is leading the development of future weather radar with this project. 
Learn more here and follow us. The Storm Prediction Center is one of the NOAA weather partners. They are located in the National Weather Center in Norman, Oklahoma. Greg Carbon gives us a glimpse into what the SBC does. Our mission is to analyze and forecast severe thunderstorms and the potential for tornadoes, large hail, and damaging winds from those thunderstorms across the lower 48 states, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. One of the primary missions of the Storm Prediction Center is the issuance of severe thunderstorm and tornado watches across the country when conditions appear to be coming together to support the development of severe thunderstorms and tornadoes. The world-class meteorologists in the Storm Prediction Center specialize in severe weather and keeping you safe. Learn more here and follow us. The National Severe Storms Lab is working on increasing the lead time for severe weather warnings. The national average for tornado warnings is currently 13 minutes, but more notice would be helpful, especially for those in charge of moving large groups to shelter. Warn on Forecast will help forecasters issue hazardous weather warnings earlier. The project will give them more info about the chances of strong winds, large hail, and even tornadoes. Currently, warnings are created by forecasters looking at the atmosphere outside, understanding its volatility, and then comparing that to how they see the Doppler radar presenting what's going on inside the thunderstorms. Warn on Forecast is an idea where we're going to take the massive amounts of satellite, radar, and surface data and stick them all into a very high resolution prediction model. And then by producing new forecasts every 15 or 20 minutes, the forecasters hopefully will be able to use that model to produce warnings that extend out to an hour. Before the National Weather Service can use this tool, it must be developed and tested. One big challenge will be deciding how to get the model predictions to the forecasters. I'm going to keep this one very low, I'm just adjusting the track. These hazardous weather prediction models are going to produce a huge amount of output. And this fire hose of data is just too much for forecasters to handle in real time quickly. So in order to help deal with that, NSSL has developed a related project called FACETS. And FACETS is the methodology which will enable forecasters to focus very quickly on the most important threats. Once worn on forecasts and FACETS are proven to be reliable and effective, then forecasters will be better able to inform you of threats nearby. Learn more here and follow us. Hazardous Weather Test Bed is located at the National Weather Center in Norman, Oklahoma. It is used for experiments that will allow forecasters to learn and apply new technologies. The Hazardous Weather Test Bed is a really unique space throughout all of NOAA. And this is where the researchers and the operational folks come together in a common space to solve operational problems and to test new research tools that the research community is working on. The goal is to accelerate the transfer from research to operations of the newest tools and techniques. People come from around the world to collaborate on this unique project. We can bring together not only NOAA people, but also university people, faculty, uh, researchers, uh, private sector meteorologists, folks working in other countries in meteorology, forecasters can all come together and focus on what the problem of the day is with the forecasters. Each spring, several experiments occur in the hazardous weather test bed. Learn more here and follow us. What are you looking at? And what are you ignoring? Did you notice the NOAA logo in the corner? 
Forecasters have a lot of information in front of them too. Every second counts during severe weather and decisions about where to focus are constantly being made. This could be even more challenging in the future. Phased array radar will produce four to six times more information than what we have now, which brings us to the question researchers are hoping to answer. Will more radar information affect forecasters' decisions? From our past experiments, we've learned a lot about how forecasters think uh, during the warning decision process, but we've also learned that those thought processes are very complex, and for that reason, we need a better way to be able to track forecasters' cognitive activity. Inbounds and possibly golf ball sized tails. And eye tracker is a piece of technology that is used to determine in real time where someone's eye gaze is located. And these eye trackers are typically video based, which means a camera sits below a computer monitor, and with infrared light and vector analysis, we can determine where a person is looking and how their eyes are moving. Eye tracking is already being used in the medical field and air traffic control. Using similar research methods, NSSL is discovering the benefit for weather forecasting too. Phased array radar will give forecasters a lot more to think about. Understanding their decision-making process will help researchers develop even more user-friendly tools. So what's the benefit for you? Even better weather warnings. To learn more, check us out online and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back for a look at your marine forecast. Starting with the sea ice edge, we can see that there's a channel of open area that's crawling up the Chukchi Sea coast almost to Wainwright at this point. We do expect uh, over, over time, over the next week or so, for that channel to make its way possibly as far all the way up to Point Barrow. We don't expect the rest of the North Slope to open up anytime soon, but we do expect that maybe that channel uh, will get all the way up to Point Barrow. In general, the ice is slow to melt right now because of cold temperatures as well as the fact that most of the ice that's left is pretty high concentration, it's pretty thick. Um, but we'll see if that channel can open up all the way to Point Barrow within the next week or so, because we do have some warmer, warmer temperatures coming into the area. For Southeast, for Thursday, we are looking at winds for the Southern Gulf out of the East and Southeast around 20 to 25 knots. So some low level small craft advisory winds there. For the Northern Gulf, more like 10 knots out of the West and 10 to 20 knots for the inside waterways. If we look into Friday, uh, definitely winds coming down in the Southern Gulf, 10 knots out of the East seas, six to seven feet and continuing 10 knots out of the North and Northwest for the Northern Gulf, 10 to 15 knots still for the inside waterways. For South Central on Thursday, Variable winds for a lot of uh, the Gulf area, as well as Prince William Sound, light and variable, just about 10 knots. We've got some winds out of the west at about 20 knots on either side of the Barrens, and also variable at 10 knots for the Cook Inlet. Uh, seas pretty small, two to uh, peaking around five feet just to the west of the Barren Islands. For Friday, pretty much the same story. Generally light winds. We do have 20 knots on either side of the Barrens, with a uh, flow changing a little bit. So we've got out of the west for the west side of the Barrens and then out of the northeast for the Gulf side of the Barren Islands. For Thursday around the Alaska Peninsula and Kodiak Island areas, 10 to 20 knots generally out of the west. We do have some southwesterly flow through Shelikov Strait there at 20 knots. And for Friday, winds increasing just a little bit to 15 to 20 knots instead of 10 to 20 knots. Seas still rather small, two to five feet. For the Aleutian chain on Thursday, we've got light winds for the Eastern Aleutians, variable at about 10 knots, increasing just a little bit as we head out to the Western Aleutians, out of the Southwest to South, 25 knots. And then heading into Friday, we'll see those slightly stronger winds push into the Central Aleutians, 20 to 25 knots, across that whole area further west, and then still variable at 10 knots for the eastern Aleutians. Seas relatively small, uh, one to five feet, uh, except for the western Aleutians, seven to eight feet there. 
For the West Coast on Thursday, light winds once again for most of the West Coast. Exemption is going to be uh, winds out of the Southwest around 25 knots, so some low-level small craft advisory winds just off the Yukon Delta, 15 knots out of the West in Norton Sound. And then winds increasing just a little bit uh, out in the open bearing to about 20 knots out of the south on Friday. For the Arctic coast, we have generally easterly flow along the north slope, 10 to 20 knots, with strongest winds further west near, uh, near Point Barrow. And then for the Chukchi Sea, generally southerly winds up to about 25 knots. Looking ahead into Friday, winds picking up a little bit more in the Chukchi Sea out of the southwest, about 30 knots. Still about 25 knots off of Point Barrow and 15 knots for much of the rest of the North Slope area. Recapping what we can expect for tonight, we've got some continuing showers for the southeastern mainland and some rain for the southern panhandle, but generally dry across most of the state. We will see some fog development along the west coast, and if temperatures get down below freezing, some freezing fog for the north slope. And then heading into Thursday, we do have a returning chance of thunderstorms during the afternoon and evening hours. It's going to be shifting a little bit south from where it has been the last few days, so we're focusing mostly on the central and eastern Alaska range with those thunderstorm chances all the way from the Canadian border westward to about the Denali area. We'll see some showers for the northern Gulf Coast as well as the Panhandle and some rain moving into the Aleutians with the next system. But once again, should be a dry day for much of the state, uh, especially the western interior and the west coast. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.